The Story of Carlos Slim Helu, 12-Year-Old Investor to Mexico's Wealthiest Man If you have ever been to Mexico, you've used something Carlos Slim Helu owns. From Mexico's largest telecom provider to the largest construction company and shopping mall chain, he owns everything. There is a common joke among wealthy Mexicans that Carlos expanded to the U.S. because there was nothing left to buy in Mexico. With an estimated net worth of $86 billion, he is one of the wealthiest people in the world and was the richest from 2009 to 2013, beating the likes of Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. His rise to the top has been controversial as he has monopolized important Mexican industries. But how did Carlos amass such massive wealth in a country where an average person earns $14,000 a year? This is the story of Carlos Slim Hello and how he monopolized a country. Carlos Slim was born in Mexico City, Mexico on January 28, 1940. His parents, Julian Slim Haddad and Linda Helu Ara, were of Lebanese descent. Carlos's father was sent to Mexico in 1902 to avoid being drafted into the Ottoman army. When banks started defaulting and foreign investors started panic selling assets during the Mexican Revolution of 1910, Carlos's father decided to stay and buy ridiculously cheap assets. He made a good fortune doing this. Carlos would do the same later in the 1980s, but more about that in a minute. At a young age, he decided to become a businessman. His father taught him business lessons on finance, management, and accounting, something he would later teach his children too. At 11, Slim invested in a government savings bond, which taught him about compound interest. That's earlier than Warren Buffett, who started investing at 12. His father died in 1953, when he was just 13, but he continued to work for the company. By 17, he made 200 pesos weekly, roughly $400 a month in today's money, working there. He studied civil engineering at the National Autonomous University of Mexico. He was a bright student, as he also tutored other students on linear programming and algebra. Although Carlos studied engineering, he was always more interested in business, especially economics. He took economics courses in Chile when he completed his engineering degree. Slim has said that his mathematical ability and linear programming background were key factors in helping him gain an edge in the business world. After graduating from university in 1961, Slim began his business career as a stock trader in Mexico, often working 14-hour days. By 25, thanks to his inheritance and savings, he had a net worth of $400,000, and he started his first brokerage firm. Since he had built a good understanding of business, its success exploded. And by 1966, Carlos was worth an estimated $40 million. This is where his plan for complete domination would start, and he laid the foundation for his future monopoly, Grupo Carso. Through this company, he started a bottling plant and a real estate holding company. Carlos's business plan was simple, acquire businesses selling at a deep discount instead of building companies from the ground up. So he started to go on a shopping spree. Slim initially focused on real estate, mining, and bottling companies. By 1972, he had already acquired seven companies and he was starting to make a name for himself. During the 70s, his wealth continued to grow. But like most successful investors, Carlos's biggest successes came from market crashes and recessions. In 1982, the Mexican economy started to crash. Many banks struggled to fulfill their obligations, and foreign investors were panic selling everything. But Slim knew the market was overreacting. He went all in and acquired many Mexican flagship businesses at depressed valuations. He bought businesses that were selling at ridiculously low valuations and retaining it for cash flow or eventually selling the stake at a greater profit in the future. One of Carlos's sons remembers this time vividly as his father would give them valuable investing lessons. He would make many comparisons like how a Mexican insurance company sold for far less than a similar American insurer. And compared with European candy or cigarette makers, Mexican manufacturers were drastically undervalued. Carlos knew this would not last and invested heavily by buying up a lot of great Mexican businesses for dirt cheap. He purchased many Mexican businesses at deep discounts, including Empresas Frisco, a mining concessionary and chemical maker. Industrias Nicobre, a copper manufacturer, and Reynolds Aluminio, a Mexican aluminum company. He also spent 13 million U.S. dollars to acquire the Mexican insurance agency Seguros de Mexico in 1984. This would be one of his best investments, eventually making him $1.3 billion in 2007. By 1985, 
the market was coming to its senses and Carlos had bought everything for dirt cheap. But the biggest fortunes aren't made by doing this. It's made by capitalizing on extremely lucrative privatization efforts of the government, and Carlos knew it well. So, when the Mexican government announced its privatization plans in the early 1990s, Carlos was excited. And why wouldn't he be? This one deal was about to make him more than everything he had made before. The Mexican government was selling its largest telecom operator, and Carlos seized the opportunity. Later in 1990, Carlos purchased the landline telecommunications operator Telmex from the Mexican government. Since he had invested so early, he would profit hugely from its growth. Its cash flows and revenues from the company would eventually form the bulk of his private fortune. By 2006, Telmex had become a monopoly. It controlled and operated 90% of the telephone lines in Mexico, and the wireless companies he owns, Telcel, operated almost 80% of all the country's cell phones. By the late 90s, Carlos controlled most of the big businesses in Mexico and began setting his sights on America. Slim started to gain a lot of media attention after he bought large stakes in several big U.S. retailers like Barnes & Noble, Office Max, Office Depot, Circuit City, Borders, and CompUSA. There wasn't much left to buy in Mexico, which was also a running joke between Mexican businessmen. Since his telecom company was doing so well, he set up a Telmex USA branch and also acquired a stake in TrackPhone, an American cellular telephone operator. On the 29th of March 2007, Carlos surpassed Warren Buffett as the world's second richest person, with an estimated net worth of 53.1 billion US dollars. Buffett had an estimated net worth of $52.1 billion. On August 8, 2007, Carlos overtook Bill Gates as the world's richest person. Slim's estimated wealth reached $59 billion US dollars, based on the value of his public holdings at the end of July. Gates' net worth was estimated to be around $58 billion US dollars at the same time. He would continue to hold this position until 2013. Carlos has also invested a lot in real estate. He owns the largest construction company in Mexico, but has diversified his real estate portfolio. He bought many properties in Spain during 2015 and 2016 when it hit rock bottom. He has also invested in multiple U.S. properties, the most famous being the Duke Siemens Mansion, a 1901 Beau Arts House on Fifth Avenue in New York City. He bought it for $44 million in 2010. Slim also owns a second mansion in New York City, which he bought in 2011 for 15.5 million US dollars. Carlos Slim Hello is also big on philanthropy. In 2019, Forbes put Slim in the list of the world's most generous philanthropists outside the US. Although he has been very skeptical about the giving pledge, in which billionaires have pledged to give more than 50% of their wealth, he has donated more than $4 billion to charity. But when you build a massive fortune like Carlos has, there is bound to be some controversy. Carlos's crazy wealth has been a subject of controversy because it has been amassed in a developing country where the average per capita income is around $14,500 a year and nearly 17% of the population lives in poverty. His monopoly of the telecom industry has also created problems. Critics claim that Slim is a monopolist, pointing to Telmex's control of 90% of the Mexican landline telephone market. Slim's wealth is so massive that it's equivalent to 5% of Mexico's GDP. For instance, according to the OECD, his telecom company Temimex charges among the highest usage fees in the world. In the end, Carlos Slim Hello's rise to the top has been filled with great decisions and betting big when he identifies opportunities. He has the temperament not to panic when everything crashes and value businesses on how much cash they can produce. If you want to become a great investor, this is one quality you must have. So, what do you think about Carlos Slim Hello? Do you think he is one of the greatest investors of our time? Comment that down below and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this.